All right, today's classes have been cut short because of pep rally. So, um, and as you can see, no one cares that we have limited time and that they're going to have homework this weekend um, because theirs is due Monday. Um, Angela, I have included yours uh, in your classroom under your science class uh, work, okay? So all you got to do is go in and uh, answer the questions. Only like four questions, three questions, something like that. But, all right, here we go. No. I love you, but no. I mean, you can. You read very well, but no. Not right now. All right. In December 1903, Wilbert and Orville Wright bought an odd looking vehicle to the Zerty Beach in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. People had flown in balloons for more than 100 years, but they had something else in mind. They did something that no one else had ever done. They actually took something that was heavier than air and made it fly, okay? So, it lasted about 12 seconds, went roughly 120 feet, okay? So what did the Wright brothers know about flying that allowed them to construct the first airplane? How can the principles they use explain how a jet can now fly across the country? And the answer has to do with fluid pressure and what happens when fluid moves. And remember, air is considered fluid, okay? That's, that's some more of that previous learning that we've talked about. Okay? So far in this chapter, you've learned about fluids that are not moving. But what makes a, a fluid flow? And what happens to a fluid pressure when it does move? Okay? This is, if you ever watched the weather, the weatherman is constantly talking about high pressures, low pressures. This is what we're talking about. Okay? That is air that is moving. Okay? Now, a fluid motion, a fluid naturally allows an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And this happens, for example, when you sip on a drink from a straw. When you start to sip, you remove the air from the straw. And this creates an area of low pressure in the straw. So the high, uh, higher air pressure pushing down on that surface of the drink then forces the liquid to come up the straw. Yeah? And the whole time you thought it's just you sitting there sucking on it like a wild man or something. See? It actually has to do with the pressure. Isn't that amazing? Okay? So what is Bernoulli's principle? Okay? Uh, in the 1700s, he, of course, he was a Swiss scientist. Okay? He discovered that pressure of moving fluid is different than the pressure of a fluid at rest. But Newley's principle states that the faster a fluid moves, the less pressure it exerts on an object. The faster it moves, the less pressure it exerts on an object. And come Monday and Tuesday, we're going to do some experiments that kind of proves that. Okay? Um, one of the things we'll do is the discovery challenge on the, on the first page. Uh, don't do it right now because it's going to just distract everybody in the class. But we, I'm going to give you a strip of paper, okay? And you're going to hold it up underneath your mouth and you blow across it. The paper is hanging limp, right? And you will blow across it and the paper comes up. What? Okay, you're blowing air out across it and it comes up. What? Okay? The reason is because the high pressure is underneath. The air moving across is the low pressure. The high pressure causes this to rise. Oh, so since there's higher pressure underneath yeah. it, it comes up. Yeah, because the higher pressure is underneath it comes up. Because okay. the low, so if you blow, it makes all the air above it uh, slower. It's moving. It's moving faster, so therefore, yeah. yeah. That's it. Exactly. I mean, not slower. I mean, not as much like pressure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the air moves above the paper, but the air below the paper does not. So the moving air exerts less pressure than the still air. And as a result, the still air exerts a greater pressure on the bottom of the paper, paper pushing the paper upward. Okay, and we'll do that. Like I said, it has got to be a strip. If you try it with a, a big sheet of notebook paper, it doesn't work. It's too heavy for you because you're not spreading the air out evenly across there. Okay? Uh, now, the Wright brothers also understood uh, Bernoulli's principle. They used it when they designed and built their plane. 
Okay. Uh, Bernoulli's principle helps at explain how planes fly, how smoke goes up the chimney, how an atomizer, that's a little squirt bottle, works, and how the uh, flying disc of a frisbee flies through the air. This principle talks about all that. I mean, it explains that. Okay. The objects in flight, uh, Bernoulli's principle is one factor that helps explain flight from a small kite to a huge airplane. Objects can be designed so that their shapes causes air to move at different speeds. That's why airplanes has lifts and things like that on it, okay? It's not just a solid piece. You've actually got the parts out there that moves up and down. Uh, helicopter blades, uh, the main rotors do not just send there straight out and spin. That, the pilot actually has controls in there that he can tilt those things one way or the other. And when he, when he tilts the main rotor, the tail rotor tilts also, okay? So he's using, these, he's using this principle here. But okay. the tail rotor twists the opposite way to keep it in a balance. Yes, you are correct. I read the graph on it. No, you're, you're, you're right, you're absolutely right. It, it twists the opposite way to keep it in balance, okay? If the air moves faster above the object, fluid pressure pushes the object upward. If the air moves faster below the object, then it pushes it downward. Okay? Okay? So the faster it moves, it's going to go, the pressure is going the opposite way. If it's on top, it moves it up. If it's on bottom, it moves it down. Okay? So the wings of an airplane is designed to produce lift or an upward force. Okay? Uh, because the wings are slanted, the air that hits it is forced downward as the plane moves. So the air exerts an equal and opposite force on the wings and then pushes it upward. And this allows the force helping an airplane to take off. So the curved shape of the wing also gives an airplane lift because the top of the wing is curved. Air moving over the top has a greater speed than the air underneath, so therefore it helps lift it up off the ground. Yeah, so that's why they have uh, airplane wing, don't, they have a little bit of a tilt to them. It is. It is. That's why they have the tilt. Absolutely. It's not much of a tilt. It's just a slight tilt. Just a slight tilt. Yep. You're absolutely correct. Okay. The atomizers, um, you can see the picture up there. Again, you've got, when you're squeezing the little bulb, they used to do these in old department stores. That's what they had the perfume in that the ladies could squirt and smell. Now, of course, they've got the little squirt bottles, okay? Uh, same principle, absolute same principle, just different, uh, not quite as elegant looking, if you would. Um, but when you squeeze the little bulb there, you're creating the low pressure because the air is moving faster. So the high pressure is in the container and it forces the perfume or whatever up through the tubing and out, okay? Uh, same thing if you're sitting around your fireplace. You'll notice how as long as you've got the flue open, your living room doesn't usually fill up with smoke, right? That's because you've got that low pressure here. And air outside, remember, air is always moving. Even though you don't feel it, the air is constantly moving. So the air is moving over the top of your chimney out there, okay? So when it's moving, it's creating the low pressure. So the high pressure is sending the smoke up the chimney. Okay? That's how it works. It's really pretty simple. I mean, it, this, is, this is a more simple uh, concept than uh, Pascal's uh, principle we talked about yesterday. Okay? Uh, flying, uh, the flying disc, your Frisbee, it's the shape of it, again, because of the curve of it, the way it's curved. The air moves over the top of it as it's flying. It's faster. The air is moving faster over the top than it is at the bottom. So the low pressure is on the bottom, high pressure on the top, so it lifts it up. And that's what keeps it in the air for a good distance if you know how to throw one. Okay? It's really pretty, pretty simple. All right. Is that a rugby ball? Or a rugby ball? That's supposed to be a flying dish. <coughs> Okay, this is kind of gives you the idea. Now, when I do this, if I can get it to work, you will notice the ball wobbles. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, 
Okay? Okay, that's what we're talking about. I'm creating what? Force. Force. Okay. Upward force. Air. It's gravity. What kind of pressure am I creating? Air. You're creating high pressure down below, and then there's the... Yeah, there's low pressure. Okay. What? That was so you know, I so I different after all. Yeah, when you go home, you get your straw, you can just try this all weekend. But I don't have enough money to afford one. Yeah, because the air, because the air. It but did you notice, did you that notice the ball still. wobbling? Why did the ball wobble? What do you think, sir? Because it's different. Yeah, because remember, air, air is all around us, so that ball, the natural instinct of that ball is to go somewhere else, not just stand there and float. So you got air moving on it, so that ball is wobbling because it is wanting to move. It does not want, but I'm asserting that force, that pressure on it, so it has no choice until I run out of air. Yes? Yeah, I did the same thing. Exactly. Okay, hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Uh, you'll find your questions, of course, on your homework page. Bye.